Thank you for tuning in today. My name is McCade Marshall and this is Word of the Week. Word of the Week is a short video I shoot every single week for my readers and viewers from all over the world. So thank you for tuning in today. At the end of this video, if you enjoy this message, I encourage to, you to share it with your family, your friends, loved ones, and coworkers. And you can do that by copying the link to this video and pasting it into email and also onto your Facebook, Twitter, and all your favorite social media sites. So make sure to share the good news at the end of this message. Also, I have a YouTube channel at youtube.com that you can subscribe to for all my latest videos. And the channel is just my name, McCadeMarshall.com. All right, well, the word of the week for this week is the heart healer. Wounds of the soul happen to all of us. In any close relationship, there is always going to be issues that we have to work through. No one is perfect, and therefore, even the best of relationships are not always going to be perfect. Conflicts are going to arise. Disagreements that lead to arguments are going to erupt. Hurtful and critical words are going to be spoken. If you have ever been in any type of a relationship, whether it be with a spouse, a family member, a close friend, or someone you are dating, there will be times when hurtful things are said or done, sometimes intentionally and sometimes not. The key to moving forward in any relationship even a healthy one, is to learn to let harmful words that were spoken not stick to you. The way we overcome negative and hurtful words is by reminding ourselves of what God says about us. The way God sees each of us is much different than how we see ourselves and how others see us. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 says, the Lord does, doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. If you are going through heartache and pain today, I want to encourage you to look to the Lord. Only God can truly heal a broken heart. Many people act out their hurts in life by making poor choices. A hurting heart might be tempted to run to drugs, to alcohol, and other harmful behavior in order to numb the pain. A wounded heart can cause even good people to act out in negative ways. The good news today is God our Father is the heart healer. One of the greatest promises from God made to us is in Psalm 147.3, which says, he heals the brokenhearted, and he binds up their wounds. The Lord is the ultimate heart surgeon. He can heal anyone of any pain they are going through. The Bible says that it is through Jesus Christ that anyone can be made whole again. The prophet Isaiah tells us God's perfect plan is to restore mankind to wholeness through Christ when he declares in Isaiah 53 verses 3 through 6, the Messiah, he, was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we do not care, did not care, yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. 
All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. The reason only Jesus can heal you is because he literally took all of the punishment, all of the hurt, all of the deepest grief ever known to mankind, and he carried it upon himself. There is absolutely no greater love that has ever been displayed in history than through the life and the suffering of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God. Whatever you are going through, Jesus has gone through it for you. The Lord knows what it is like to hurt. He knows what it is like to suffer. This is why Jesus is the heart healer. Today, I believe God wants to bind up your wounds. He wants to heal any area of brokenness in your heart. Maybe you have lost a loved one. Maybe your spouse walked out on you in a marriage. Maybe your best friend turned on you and walked away. Maybe you made a poor decision and now others are suffering from your mistakes. Whatever heartache you may be going through, the Lord wants to heal your heart. Jesus did not come to the earth suffering a horrific death by way of crucifixion in order for you to drag through life spiritually and emotionally maimed. Jesus came so that you would rise above the hurt. He came so that you would have the ability to rise above the heartache and the pain. He came so that you would walk in victory through the power of the Holy Spirit that God the Father poured out after Jesus rose from the grave. Jesus may have been crucified and left for dead in the rich man's tomb, but he did not stay dead. On the third day, he rose again. In the same way, you may feel like your heart is dead in some areas. A relationship is dead. A marriage is dead. A loved one or a best friend is dead. The good news today is God has resurrection power. He has a new relationship in store for you. The gospel message is still just as alive today as it was when Jesus proclaimed to be the Son of God 2,000 years ago. Jesus is the fulfillment of Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, which says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Today, Jesus wants to bind up your broken heart. He wants to comfort you and give you his peace. Jesus is your heart healer. Receive the inner healing that is yours through knowing Jesus has already made you whole because of what he did for us on the cross. You are strong. You are well able to do all that God has called you to do. No setback, no disappointment, no heartache is going to keep you from walking in the power of the Holy Spirit and from fulfilling every purpose God has ordained for you to fulfill. Well, I just want to pray over you really quick that you'd get this message deep into your spirit that God is the heart healer. So wherever you are, if you just want to bow your head, close your eyes, and listen along as I pray over this message. 
Father God, I thank you so much for everyone listening and watching right now. I pray for anyone with a broken heart, Lord. I pray for anyone that's suffering right now. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a physical illness. Maybe it's a financial loss. Whatever it is, Lord, I pray, God, that you would put your Holy Spirit on them and your comfort and your love to know that they are not alone, that you're there right there with them, that you know what it's like to suffer and to hurt, but that the good news today is that there's new hope there's new life, and there's healing. So I just decree and declare healing, health, wholeness, riches, and life for everyone listening and watching that the new beginning and the new journey starts now. In your great name, Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Amen. Well, I want to tell you the first step to experiencing true wholeness and true healing with God the Father is by having a personal relationship with Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. Whoever has the Son has the Father, and vice versa. You cannot go to heaven without making Jesus Christ the personal Lord and Savior of your life. Because Jesus, his blood is what makes atonement for our sins. When he died on the cross, it, he took our punishment so that we wouldn't spend eternity in hell suffering for our sins, but we could be made right with the, in the eyes of God and go to heaven to be with him forever in eternity. So if you've never received the free gift of Christ's salvation, would you just bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me this prayer and invite Jesus to come into your heart and be Lord of your life. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to die on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer, the Bible says that you have been spiritually born again and that your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven and that you're an enrolled citizen of heaven. So welcome to the family of God. And the next step in your faith journey is to get involved in a good Bible-based church and Christian community so you can grow in your faith and in the knowledge of God. And also be water baptized as a public profession of your faith in Christ, that you're dying to an old way of life and you're being raised to new life in Christ. And read the Bible every day. The Bible is the word of God. It's how we learn what God says and it's how we go strong and deeper in faith. And make sure to pray every day. Prayer is simply talking to God like you would your very best friend. So read the Bible, pray every day, and make sure to tell someone you, the, you know that's a Christian that you gave your life to Christ. You can tell a friend, a family member, someone at work or school, maybe a pastor or preacher, someone you know that is a Christian that you gave your life to Jesus so that they can encourage you along in your new faith. And also I have a website with a lot of great resources that can help you out as well. And the website's just my name, McCadeMarshall.com. And on McCadeMarshall.com, there's over 100 different Word of the Week videos just like this one that you can watch, you can re-watch, you can scroll through. There's all sorts of topics from the scriptures I talk about. So make sure you check out all those Word of the Week videos. And if you're not on my uh, mailing list, I mail out newsletters every three months to my mailing list, to people all over the world. If you'll click on that newsletters tab, fill out that form there, I'd be more than happy to add you to my mailing list. And also I've written a few books that you can order on my website as well. And the latest book I wrote is called Finding Your Keys. And Finding Your Keys has 12 different keys or spiritual truths that when you apply these truths to your life, they will unlock the spiritual, supernatural realm of God to go to work and bring real life transformation to your life and to your heart. And another book I wrote is called Breathe. And Breathe is all about God breathing new life into your God-given dreams. And the first book I wrote is called Tasting the Goodness of God. And Tasting the Goodness of God has 31 daily devotionals that help you learn how to spend time with God each and every day. So if you don't have Finding Your Keys, Breathe, or Tasting the Goodness of God, I encourage you to order those books, and I'd be more than happy to sign them and ship them to you. All right, well, in closing, I just want to declare a special blessing over you. I declare you are healthy and whole. Right now, 
God is binding up your wounds and healing your heart. God is your heart healer. He has you in the palm of his hand. For every broken relationship, God has restoration. For every disappointment, God has new hope. You are rising higher and are going to fulfill your purposes in the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. With the Lord's help, there is nothing you cannot accomplish in Jesus' name. Well, I love you so much, and I am praying for you every single day. God bless you.